say hi when you get here. Hello, hello everyone. This is Jen with Jen's Den Art. I am an acrylic artist and today is our New Technique Wednesday, number 23. And we're going to have some fun making a word sign today using acrylic paints without using um, paint markers. Funny, I like that. And we're actually going to paint on this as well. So say hello when you come on. I'd love to know where you're watching from. Tell us how the weather's going. We always love to talk about the weather. Hi, Miss Jane. Hi, Debbie. Hello, Miss Margaret. Let me grab my colors real quick while everybody's coming on that I'm going to be using. I'm going with my craft paints today, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Most of my craft paints are being pulled. Ooh, terracotta. That looks like a pretty color. Okay. My medium. All right. Hey, everybody. Hello, Monica. Hi, Donna. From Louisiana and Judy from Arkansas. Cold snap in the 60s. I love it. Y'all see I have a long sleeve on here. You know it's been in the 40s at night and it gets up to the 60s during the day here. So it's beautiful, beautiful weather. Hello, Miss Pat. How is everyone doing? How's New York treating you today? Hello, Miss Carrie. Ohio is Kathy. Hey, Kathy and Sandra and Nancy and Wendy. And Mississippi, Miss Margaret's from Mississippi. Man, we are from all over the place. I love it. Very good. Well, I'm glad, Miss Pat. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, so a couple of announcements. We have our pop up paint party, which is reversible. If you haven't seen it, make sure you go to the link that I provided to let you see this beautiful pop up paint party. It's going to take us five days to paint this. It is $15 to join in that. Also, on that starts on September 30th, but also on September 30th, we launch our membership group um, to Jen's Den Art Tribe, and we are open for five days, and um, we call ourselves the Painting Sistas, S-I-S-T-A-S, -S -S. and um, yeah, we are super excited to have new people join us. If you happen to join the pop up paint party early, like now, you might have a little bonus um, offered to you in your checkout. So, uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind. And let me show you what I'm doing today. Okay, so let me bring you to the large screen. I'm gonna bring. I'm actually gonna bring me to the large screen. Let me show you what I have. So I have this board. Now it looks like it's extremely bright right now. Let me close my blind, or maybe I could turn the light off. Let's see, that might be better. So I have this board. Nope, we're still extremely bright. Hang on, let me close my blind. We have the sun coming in right here. There we go. That might be better. And my husband actually made this for me. And in the tribe, in the actual tribe membership, we show you how to make these kind of boards. He put two boards together. Um, I guess they're like one by sixes, and he framed it for me. And I am creating a sign for a gift. It, I painted the background of the board. Um, it's like a vanilla color. And when I'm done painting the sign, I'm actually going to sand it with a sander and it makes the whole sign like super, super rustic. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to use a hand sander to show you what I'm talking about. Um, but I actually use, let me bring on the other screen. I actually use, um, a hand sander, like an orbital sander to really get the effect that I want. 
Okay, the next thing I did, and if you're following me in my Acrylic 101, you would know how to do what I have right here in front of me. The next thing I did was I actually used um, a font that I really like on Canva, and this is an 11 by 14. And so I put the words, and it says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I put the words in Canva. I made it 11 by 14. I blew it up. I printed it out to 11 by 14. Um, I don't know what I did with the. Oh, here it is. So it came out to be this size right here. I traced it onto my board. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm transferring this over. Now, I am, a, I am an artist with paintbrushes. Okay, so I'm not really big on... Um, on using paint pens that much. I love to use paint brushes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I use paint brushes to, um, to do my lettering. And then we're also going to add some flowers onto this in the corners. I started mixing a color and I started putting it on here and I don't like it. So I am going to add, I want it to be kind of like a golden a golden color so I'm gonna add a little bit of um, some more paint in here and I'm just stirring it up with a palette knife and I might like that color no, I need to go a little bit darker so I'm gonna add a little bit more and I'm gonna add some medium to it because I want it to be flowy Okay, I don't want it to be a thick, heavy body, especially when I am doing um, lettering. So I want my paint to be, you know, pretty, pretty thin. You can see how thin it is. All right. I don't want it to be too watery, but I want it to have a nice consistency. And I think I like that color. So I'm going to take a small paintbrush. And a lot of my, um, my customers that I sell to, they like, um, they like the paintbrush. They like the look of the paintbrush on their, on their words. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using a small paintbrush, and I'm just basically outlining everything here with the letters and then we're going to put some flowers on here as well. So on the letters where I want the larger part of the letters I just push a little harder with the paintbrush and then where I want the thin line of the letter I'm going to bring my camera down so y'all can see better. Where I have the thin line of the letter um, I just don't push as hard. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I used to just make word signs like this. I used to not do anything else but make word signs. And then I had people um, ask me to add um, to their word signs to add like little, uh, like a little bouquet of flowers or like a little truck for a kid's room. And so that's how I started expanding beyond um, just doing word signs. And I used to make these by hand. This was my, my, um, my hobby. Now you can see how I'm just going. I'm pushing hard when I want the E to be fat. And then when I don't want the E to be fat, I just don't push really hard. So that's why it's really important to have the, um, the paint really moving easily. And if you've ever done anything with lettering, you know that when you go on your down stroke, you go fat. And when you go on your up stroke, you go skinny. Okay. So there is that part, and then I'm going to come down here and do my, I like to do this. I like to find all of the downstrokes first, like that, 
and then come back and go back and do all the upstrokes opposite. And sometimes I have to hold my breath so I don't shake. But I'm going to show y'all how pretty this is going to end up when I'm done. And see how I'm only working on the downstrokes. Only the downstrokes. Here's another downstroke. Down stroke. And every time I make sure I have a lot of paint. Okay, then I come back and I make the really thin strokes afterwards. So all I'm using is um, craft paint. And craft paints, I find, work better on this because your craft paints are so watery that you can get that thin paint going with this a lot easier than you can with the heavy body. I wouldn't use heavy body paints on this unless you water it down or you use some medium to get it to the consistency that you want it to be. Let's keep on going. I'm going to check my comments. I remember from another class you said down fat and up thin. Yes. You also said to paint the letters instead of writing them. Such good advice. Yes. I uh, that's exactly right. So I am just all I'm doing is I'm painting. I'm not I'm not scripting at all. I'm not trying to make um, a word. I'm just painting. That's all I'm doing is I'm just following the lines. So this has absolutely nothing to do with your handwriting. All right, regardless of whether you have good or bad handwriting, it doesn't matter because handwriting has nothing to do with it. I actually um, took a template and I traced, I traced these letters on here. Let's see, I kind of messed that up. Oh, okay, I see it. It's serve. War goes here. And there. And there. Thick strokes, thick strokes, thick strokes. And then you may even want to use a different paintbrush, like one that's even thinner to do the thin strokes if you want to. Let me see, this one might be thinner. Let's see. This didn't come out, so I'm just gonna... And my flowers that I'm going to do are going to be super fun as well. They're going to be like some one-stroke flowers. So I'm going to show you that. Let me get this. Here. Let's finish up my T. And my H.
So I'm using two different paintbrushes to create these, um, these letters. I, um, in the past, I had bought a Cricut machine because I said, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of trying to do this using, um, you know, just using my free hand. So I bought a Cricut machine and I sold it after like three weeks because I was like, I can't do this. It was, you know, it was just, it was too much work. <laughs> I was like, this is so much work. You have to print it out and then you have to tape it on and then, not tape it on, but you do like the little glue thing and then you, and then you paint over it and then you have to take it off and you have to pick out the little, I was like, okay, I'm selling this thing. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't have a lot of patience with all of that kind of stuff. Isn't that crazy? And I know a lot of people do their lettering um, with crickets. Look, more power to you. I love it. If y'all want to do that. But I just, I just didn't have the patience for it. It just didn't work for me. Alright, so there is that. It's a beautiful color. And you'll see why I'm using this color once we do the flowers on here as well. I'm gonna try to get you to see the Joshua down here. This is gonna be a little more difficult to do because it's so teeny tiny. So I'm just using the really small brush. And I'm making sure my paint is kind of thin. But this is an example of why I use paint because I don't know if you can buy a paint pen in this color. You know, so sometimes I want to just use a, a special color, just like I did the other night on the gather sign with the church. Um, the word gather that I painted was in this beautiful turquoise color, and I just don't know if you can buy a paint pen in that color. So you're, um, you might be able to. I don't know. I'm just, I, I buy a couple of white and black paint pens. And that's about all I have. I'm not sure if they come in a lot of different colors. But in this case, you can, um, you can paint your words any color you want. If you do this, you can even, well, I guess you could do glitter with a paint pen, right? They have glittery paint pens, I'm sure. But a paint pen would work. You would just have to probably change the color. And you can do this same thing with a paint pen. Or, I don't know, there might be an, a device where you could put the, the color of the paint in a pen <laughs> and it comes out. I don't know. You have a gold glitter paint pen. I bet you that would be pretty. So, yeah, I am... Um, I was able to go super fast because, like I said, I used to... Let me get my face back in here. I used to just do word signs. That was it. That's all I did was word signs. And this was my, um, my Etsy shop was just these word signs like this. So I used to spend a lot of time lettering. But I never took the time to learn how to freehand letter. I always just made a template. I traced it onto my board. And then I created my, uh, my signs that way. Okay, so that, my friends, is step one. And step two, this is what we're going to do. We are going to add, I'm going to take another little cup here. It's dry paint, don't worry. It's not... Um, And I'm going to use, the colors that I want to use are like super, let me use this too. I don't have my little palette right here. They're super muted. Okay, I'm using a, um, what is this, alfalfa? Yeah, that's alfalfa. And then the peach color is called Coral Reef. It's just a Craft Smart paint. And I'm going to put some of this lighter green on here. It is a um, wild wasabi. 
Ooh, it does look like it's the color of wasabi, isn't it? Okay, now I want to go eat <laughs> at the ramen place down the road because they have sushi and they have wasabi and I love it so much. So I might have to convince my husband to take me to eat there tonight. <laughs> I just made myself hungry for ramen and sushi. Who likes ramen and sushi? Thank you, Miss Kim. Thank you for being here. You need to practice. Yes, it does take a lot of practice. Hello, Miss Nancy. How are you? The Silhouette Cameo had it for years. Do you use it, Lynn? Do you use the um the thing? I I just got I got tired of trying to tape everything and then pick it back up and un I don't know, I just really it frustrated me so I got rid of it. <laughs> It's to each his own, though. You know how that is. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to make some cute little flowers here. And this is what we're going to do first. I'm going to use my green. This is alfalfa, and then I have a little bit of a lighter green. I'm going to use my green. I'm going to put a bouquet of flowers here and down here. Okay, and so... I'm going to just make some lines out this way just to make like some little lines first. Okay, not too much, but I'm just going to do it a little. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. Just a few little lines. Okay, that's going to be good for now. And then I'm going to use kind of like a little filbert brush. Can y'all see that? The little filbert brush. I'm going to use the filbert brush. And I'm going to take some of this green. And I'm kind of mixing the two greens together. But I'm not mixing it to make a new color. I'm mixing it to have two colors on my paintbrush. And then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna pull or push and then pull and see it's gonna make some cute little leaves. Like that. You see how you can see, you can see a little bit of the other color coming through. So I'm just kind of putting two colors on my paintbrush and it's it's given an effect of like you know, different shades of the green on my paintbrush. And I'm just pulling, pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling. And yes, I have a lot of paint on my paintbrush. Lots and lots of paint. All right, let's do the same thing down here. I'm just going to go down part of the way, and I might have to come back later and add some more greenery, but we're just going to add the first layer of greenery and we'll see, we might come back to add some more. Okay, cleaning my paintbrush off. And now I am, I'm actually gonna use these two colors together. Okay, can y'all see that? Let me make sure y'all can see what I'm doing. Yeah, y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in just a tad up here so you guys can see, let me see if I can get it to stay right there. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this same filbert brush and I'm going to take just a tab of the coral and just a tab of the brown. I want more coral than brown. And I'm just going to put a little bit on both sides. And then I'm just going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to turn it. I'm going to push down and turn. I'm going to push down and turn with my fingers. So this is kind of called one stroke, one stroke painting. 
I'm going to make some little, like some little hydrangeas, basically. And they don't have to be perfect, but I'm going to make just a little cluster right here. I'm dipping, I'm, I'm, it's what's called double dipping. I'm dipping a little bit of coral and a little bit of brown. And I'm putting that on my paintbrush and I'm making some little circles. And I'm make another one right here. Don't push quite so hard if you want to make some smaller ones. So the coral color is just too bright by itself. So that's why I'm using some of that brown in it, just to calm it down a little bit. I'm going to go as close to the edge as I can. And just making some cute little bundles there. All right, then I'm going to come back with just a little bit of green. And just add a little bit of green. I might go back over this some more. I'm not sure. Okay, so that's one of my flowers. It's not even really a flower. It's just a cute little bundle of petals, I guess. <laughs> and so now I'm going to come down to the bottom. Let me see if I can get you to see that one. I'm going to come down to the bottom, and I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to just double load. I'm going to take a little bit of coral and a little bit of this brown. And... I'm going to go just a little bit faster on this one. And I'm just going to make some little clusters of some little circles. And let me try to do this a little more strategic here. So I'm going to make some little clusters of three circles. I didn't really do that in the top. I probably should have. I'm going to make a little cluster of like three little circles. One, two, three. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here, one, two, three, just kind of like a little triangle, one, two, three, and I'm going to overlap this one, but that's okay, double load, one, two, three, one, Two, three. I'm gonna go a little bit more with the with the coral this time. Okay, so using that brown in here really kind of ties it all together because it's allowing some of the brown that's in the words to come through and your eyes are just, you know, it just works better that way. So now I'm going to come back with just a little bit of um, greenery. I'm going to make some of that greenery come in here. A little bit of green, a couple of little areas. And then I'm going to go back to my liner brush, and I'm just going to put a few more little tails going around in here, just to kind of fill it in a little bit more. And kind of like that. I'm going to do the same thing up here. Oh, y'all can see it. Good. Okay. I'm going to make a couple more here just to make it come out a little bit more. And just kind of fill in a few of those little spots. Just 
just fill in a little bit. Okay, and so we're done. I am done with this, and then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to let this dry overnight. And then once it's dry overnight, I am going to stick the orbital sander on it. Even though there's paint on top of it, I'm going to stick the orbital sander on it. And I'm going to show you, let me get my little hand sander. Since I'm inside and I'm not outside in the woodworking shop or in the garage, I'm just going to show you really quick. So I painted this um, yesterday, all of the white I painted yesterday. So today I painted all of the brown and the coral. And then I am going to take it, I'm just trying to move some stuff out the way so I don't knock everything over before I show you. I'm going to try to lean it just sideways. I'm going to go outside with the orbital sander, and I am going to sand down. I'm going to show, I just want to show you what it's going to look like. Okay, so let me show you this. Can y'all see what I just did? Ooh, 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 there it is. Okay, y'all see what I just did? So, I think I forgot to tell you. Before I painted it with acrylic cream paint, I think I used it, it's called vanilla. Before I painted it with that, I, I stained it with a Minwax stain. So my entire board is stained underneath with its it's crazy, but it's an oil-based stain, okay? So it's an oil-based stain. I let the stain sit for like a day. Then I came back with the, uh, the off-white. Then I painted my sign, and I'm actually going to take the orbital sander. Once it's all dry, I'm going to take that sander. Let me see if I can. I want to show you what's going to happen. I'm just trying to show you one little area. Okay, so you can see it here. See how it's gonna it's gonna um it's gonna come through like the grain of the wood is gonna come through and the wood is already dark, which is what you want. You want that darkness underneath and the light on top. So once all of this dries, I'm going to really, really quick, I'm going to take my electric sander just because it's going to be a lot easier on me. And I'm going to, I'm going to sand this whole thing down and it's going to make, now I'm not going to do the words that much. I'm going to kind of work around it. I'm going to work my orbital sander around it and you can see the grain, see the, uh, the grain in here. It's going to pop through and it's going to make a beautiful finished piece. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. So, if you want to try this, I highly recommend that you try the Minwax stain on your wood. I know it's oil based, and I know you're not supposed to put acrylic paint over oil, but y'all, it works for this case. It's kind of like you know, you know when um, people show you how to do the crackle or the um, like put. Um, what is it like they show you how to put Vaseline they show you how to put Vaseline first and then put the paint on top and then wipe it away it's kind of the same concept but it's using a Minwax stain and it and it really works so when it's done I'm gonna seal it I'm gonna seal it with a spray polyurethane and then I'm gonna gift it and it's gonna be absolute I'm gonna show you all the finished product once it all dries but um but yeah that is, do you have to sign in with StreamYard every time? You should not have to. I can see your name, Miss Sandra, if you are wondering about that. But um, I don't think you have to every time. I don't know. Y'all probably know better than I do. <laughs> because all I do is come live. I don't, I don't usually do anything else but do the lives. <laughs> Yes, distressing the wood is so much fun, and this piece is going to be beautiful when I'm done. So I hope y'all enjoyed this new technique that I actually, I used to use this technique all the time, like about four years ago, but I haven't used it in a very long time. And um, my, uh, my niece is getting ready to have a baby, 
and she wanted a sign from me like I used to make. So I'm getting ready to make her a sign for her, her, um, her new son coming in November. And I had another request for this sign as well. And so I figured, you know what? This would be a great technique to show everybody on our new technique Wednesdays because I really, really love making these signs. They're a lot of fun. So, okay, guys, I'm so glad y'all were here today. And um, just tell me hello when you come on and share the love or sprinkle and let other people know that we have some great free lessons on Jen's Den Art. And uh, come and join us for the pop-up paint party or come and join our tribe because we do lots of fun things in there. And I would love to talk to y'all later. I'll see you next time. Bye.